Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the New Yankee Workshop. You know, recently we were in London and we found it to be a city of clocks, the most famous, I suppose, being Big Ben. In the antique shops, if they're lucky enough to own one of these tall clocks, proudly displays it in its front window. Now, this one we found at a store called the Pine Mine. I'll take you there next, then I'll show you how to build this clock right here in the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. One of the things that they take great pride in here at the Pine Mine, one of the better places to find English country pine antiques are their window displays. And as I walked by this morning, the piece that caught my eye was this tall pine clock. Usually they're expressed in a dark wood like mahogany. I think I'll go inside and find the owner, David Crew Reed, and see what he can tell me about it. Well, David, it's good of you to let me sort of break into your shop window. That's fine. We'll, we'll come and have a look, because you're interested in the long case, I believe. Yes. What can you tell me about this piece? Well, it's rather uh, charming, the original bracket base down there. It's mm -hmm. a particularly well-made long case. Um, these country clocks are very often knocked together, but uh, this one is particularly well-made, and it's more of a classical design than some of the simpler ones. Well, you know, it appears that this corner is not 90 degrees. It kind of angles back a bit. That's rather charming, isn't it? It looks almost as though it could have been made by a coffin maker. In fact, a lot of country furniture was made by, um, by coffin makers, and it's got that kind of shape to it. Craftsman's choice, I guess. Yes, it's, it's definitely a, a sort of eccentric country piece. A nice door, although, you know, this little bead detail looks like it's something you could even execute with a router today. Well, it would have been made uh, with the 19th century equivalent, and of course done by hand, That's but right. uh, the cutting blade would have been very similar to the sort you find on a modern day router. Mm. A nice cornice leading up into this box for the works. Yep, it's a good piece of cabinet making. Nice miters on the corners, and I like this chamfer on the edges. Yes, that adds a touch, doesn't it? That's a typically 19th century pattern. Okay, and then up into a couple simple moldings up here. Yep, finishes off with a nice original cornice. What appeals to you the most about this clock? Well, what I like about it is the fact that uh, underneath uh, the original paint that was on here, uh, which was simulated to look like oak, we found that the pine is actually much more attractive, which of course we find makes all this kind of thing very saleable in the shop here. Very popular. And I, I do mm. agree that revealing this wood, is, it's beautiful. It's come out very well. Now how about the uh, clock face? The face is rather nice. Um, it's quite a rarity in a pine long case in that it's brass. Most of the faces of this period were painted. Um, it's also got an eight-day striking movement, which is unusual, but a number of uh, West Country clocks, and this one was made in Bristol, uh, very often wear uh, brass-faced. We've, we've found a few in the past, but they're quite unusual. Yeah. Well, it's beautiful, and thanks for showing it to me, because this is just the inspiration I need to build a clock back at the New Yorker Workshop. Good. Well, I hope you'll be able to afford it, and we'll <laughs> make a price to tempt you. Gee. I've never built a coffin before, let alone a tall clock. But that coffin taper really adds a lot to the project. It makes it appear lighter. When you look at the clock from where you're standing, it appears there are no sides. You have to move several degrees off axis to see them at all. Now, in my research, I learned some tall clock terminology. This section down here is called the base, no surprise. This narrow portion in the middle is referred to as the waist, and up here, the bonnet. Now, if you'd like to build a clock like this for your home, a measured drawing is available with the materials list, and you'll hear more about that before the program ends. Before we get started, though, I want to take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. And we're going to start this project by building the base. So last night before I left the shop, I took some boards and planed them down to 5 eighths of an inch thickness, glued two together for the front of the base, and I also planed two boards for the sides. And the first thing that I want to do is rip one edge at a 3 and a half degree bevel. And the same thing on the other side. Now 
Now this is our panel for the front of the base, and it's gonna have to have both edges beveled. Okay, that operation cuts all three pieces to the correct length. That completes the rabbits on the side pieces of the base, both at the top and at the bottom. Now the front panel needs some similar rabbits. The one on the bottom I've already completed at the table saw. But the one on the top is a little different. It's a stopped rabbit. I don't want a gap showing in the finished base. So I've put a straight edge clamp along the line that I've marked. And I'm going to use my router with a collar and a straight cutting bit. Now I'm just going to come in along my layout line by eye until the collar hits the clamp. Now that rabbit in the back edge of the side receives the plywood back. Now we're ready for some assembly with biscuits and glue. Well now you can see that taper starting to take shape. And the next thing I want to do before I apply any glue is actually mark the length of the top panel. Now I'm just putting a mark at the long point of the angle. And with my miter gauge tipped at that same three and a half degrees, I can trim each end. Okay, perfect. And you've heard me say this before, you can never have enough clamps. Okay. Now this bead of glue will secure the front to the top. And that's OK, because all the grain is running in the same direction. But as I put the board in position, you see a classic cross-grain situation. The side wants to expand and contract with changes in humidity. But the top will move very little, because it's along the length of the grain. So no glue here. Now, there is no avoiding using some kind of mechanical fastener to hold this together. But still, it will allow some movement of the wood. Now, a piece of quarter inch plywood for the back of the base. While the base dries, I want to make the face frame that fits on the waist. So I have two styles that are a little wider than what I need, and the rails. I put double biscuit slots at each location, and now all I have to do is glue it and clamp it. Now these four pieces form the face frame for the bonnet. This is the top. It's 8 and 3 quarters. The bottom is 4 and 3 quarters wide. The two sides are 4 inches wide. And I've carefully mitered all the intersections so they fit nice and square. Now I'll cut some biscuit slots and glue it up. Well, now I think the base has had sufficient time to dry, so we can unclamp it and start working on the fancy details at the bottom. 
Now the first piece I want to work on is this two and a half inch wide base piece. And because of that cough and bevel, the miters will have to be greater than 45 degrees. The angle that I actually want is 46 and 3 quarter degrees. Now I'm just going to clamp this piece in place while I fit the other two pieces. That's pretty good. Now I can mark it for length. Here's a pattern that I drew up from photographs that I made of the original. And with it all laid out, I'm going to go to my scroll saw, which is really the perfect tool for cutting something like this. Now I'll just dry fit the pieces together, holding them even at the bottom, and trace the outline on the base. Now you'll notice that I was very generous with the cutout I made in the base. And that's because I don't want to see the base when this trim is actually applied. Before I apply the trim, I want to sand all three sides of the base nice and smooth. Then I'll nail the pieces in place. And I think we'll call it a day on this project. Well, I've already had some time in the shop today, and I'm starting to work on the waist, or the center portion of the clock. And there are a lot of construction details that are similar to the base. The face frame has been beveled on each side, just like the front of the base. These narrower pieces, which are the sides of the waist, are also beveled at the front edge and rabbited at the back edge for the plywood back. I've just completed cutting the biscuit slots which will help reinforce the joint between the face frame and the side. Now it's just a matter of biscuits and glue. It should only be necessary to leave these clamps on for about 20 minutes until the glue sets in those biscuits. Now this little cross piece is really just a spacer. It's also a place that I can attach the backer plywood. While the glue on the waist sets up, let's get back to work on the base. When I installed the plywood back, I let it extend up above this top platform. Now what I have to do is notch the plywood so that this extension will properly fit into the waist. These biscuit slots will help attach the waist to the base. OK, now I'm ready to attach the waist to the base. I'll just slip it on the front onto the biscuits and the back onto the plywood overlap. And just attach it with some brads. Well, now for the face frame of the bonnet. It needs a little bit of sanding. OK, now this rabbit that I made in the face frame of the bonnet is for this piece of quarter-inch plywood, which is necessary to support the clockworks.
This chamfer on the face frame of the bonnet is purely for decoration. The bonnet is assembled, again, using glue and biscuits. I'll clamp the sides in place and then nail the top in, set it aside to dry, and we should be able to easily finish this project tomorrow. Now, this piece of plywood is actually the base for the bonnet. I'm going to put a little glue in the biscuit slots that I cut earlier, but only the front ones. I want to allow the side biscuits to just act as guides. And this piece sits on top of the waist. And I'll just clamp that in position. Okay. Now, a little more glue in the biscuit slots that I cut that will actually attach the bonnet. Again, just the front ones. Now here's the back for the bonnet, and I've cut a hole in the middle, and that's for access to the clockworks later. You can see that it overlaps the waist, and that adds strength to this joint. We we'll also put on a little bit of glue. This piece of pine is going to be our door. And I've just rabbited the inside edges using my router with a rabbiting bit. And that's so that the door will overlap the face frame. Now I want to put a decorative edge on the front side. To mill the decorative edge on the front of the door, I'm using a 3 quarter inch radius bit, but I've set the fence to only use a portion of the cutter. Okay, and that takes care of mounting the hinges for the door. Well, now it's time to get started making and applying all the decorative moldings. And I'm going to start working on this assembly right here. There's a beaded piece at the bottom. That's one part. There's a large cove. It's another part, and then there's this bead. I'm going to start with the bottom section, which starts out as a piece of 3 quarter inch thick by 1 inch wide stock. And I'm going to run it through a 3 eighths inch radius bit. Two quick passes through the table saw makes the rabbit. Next, I want to start working on this large cove. And it starts out simply as a piece of one by four. And I'm going to mill that cove at the table saw. To make the cove, I've taken a board with a nice straight edge and clamped it to the table saw surface. The angle between the blade and the board is 38 and a half degrees. What I want to do is run my one by four through using the board as a fence. The blade will start at about an eighth of an inch above the table, and at each pass I'll keep raising it up until I get the profile I want. Okay, that's what I want. I've just set my saw at a 40 degree angle and ripped this piece of cove through. Here's a sample that's the same cut. And that will allow it to fit up against the rabbit that I made in the lower piece. The next operation is to make a cut 90 degrees to that one to fit the bottom edge. The cut that I've just made on the opposite edge of the cove is this one right here. And that's the horizontal surface that meets the waist of the clock. The last cut to make will be 90 degrees to that.
where the base meets the waist, the first piece of molding I want to put on is this one that I made earlier. It has that bead and a rabbit. And that just gets set at the front edge. Now the cove. This little base molding, the same as the one I used at the bottom of the base, completes this group of moldings. Here where the waist meets the bonnet, the built-up molding is similar to the base in that it has the same beaded piece first, then a cove that was made the same way as the cove at the bottom. But instead of using a band molding, I'm using this piece, which has a wavy edge. That's what the manufacturer refers to when they call out the router bit, which I've installed in my router table. And the first step is to run a 5 8 inch thick piece through. Here I'm adjusting the fence closer so that I just use a portion of the bit to knock off the sharp edge. And that takes care of the wavy edge molding. Now up here, where the plywood is, I want to install this piece, which is 3 quarters of an inch by about 5 eighths of an inch thick. And that's to add some thickness. There's another piece I need to add. Because of the coffin taper of the waist, but the bonnet being square, you have to make up a little bit of space. Right here, this molding sticks by about an eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to add this piece to make the corner even. The last molding in this group is a standard band molding that I picked up at the lumber yard. The next piece of molding is applied right at the point of the miter. And it's a half round that I made at my router table. You could also purchase a half round that's very similar at the lumber yard. The final group of moldings above the half round starts with this piece, which is the same base molding I used at the bottom, except I thinned it by taking about an eighth of an inch off the back side at the table saw. The next piece of molding I purchased at the store as a standard cornice molding, but I made a couple modifications. I cut this little cove detail off the bottom, and I got rid of this little notch at the top. Now to add some thickness to the top of this cornice and give it some support, I'm going to add this thin strip. And when the glue is all dry, I'll sand it smooth and even. And this piece will be ready for some finish. Well, country pine is the look that we want. And it seems that this stain that the manufacturer refers to as Spanish oak is just a ticket to get the right color. I'll put this on, let it dry, and then apply a couple tough coats of polyurethane. And we'll be ready to install the clockworks. Sounds great, doesn't it?